Ms. Grace, thank you for being here. On behalf of an institution filled with seasoned warriors, uh, we stand uh, shoulder to shoulder with you in this effort. Uh, and thank you for telling your story for all of the country to hear. It's a very important. I take it from what you said, you never signed, checked a box, or in any way indicated that you were part of any forced arbitration agreement. No, I did that. And in fact, I, um, as, as part of management at the director level through part of Steward Health uh, acquisition, um, I saw other people go who were older. They signed the arbitration paperwork. At the end, when they were terminated in, in uh, return for a, um, some kind of uh, monetary um, agreement that they can receive, it was not, I never signed that, and I would never advocate for anybody to sign that. Mr. Schwartz, uh, this is a legendary moment in my life. Now I have discovered a man who is the author of Prosser on Torts, a, book, a textbook which I purchased in law school at Georgetown quite a few years ago. Uh, I was impressed not only with the contents, but by the weight of that book. I carried it around all year, uh, trying to learn from it, and I salute you for being the co-author of one of the most famous legal textbooks in America. I'm glad to learn you, you did this. Uh, may I ask you, following up on the question with Miss Grace, recently- oh, I just want to thank you, sir. I can tell you one thing about that book that you may not know. If you put it on the floor in your kitchen, you can reach the top shelf. A lot of people do not know that. <laughs> That's good practical advice. <laughs> Recently, a company called Roku, which is a streaming service, updated its dispute resolution terms. I pulled out the uh, contract which they offer to people who wanted their services. Despite not providing a description of what terms changed, the company wouldn't allow you to continue using a Roku device to stream your favorite shows unless you agreed to the terms on this contract. Assuming a user took time to read them, and I, they're pretty simple, they say, any disputes between us, meaning the consumer and the company, will be settled by binding arbitration, paren, meaning we both give up the right to go to court, end of paren. Let's walk through what it takes to opt out of that provision in their contract. You cannot opt out by email. Instead, you have 30 days to mail a letter to Roku's general counsel. The letter must include the name of each person opting out, their contact information, the specific Roku product models owned, the software in the product, the software in the product, the services that issue the email address you use to set up your Roku account, and if applicable, a copy of your purchase receipt. Opt-out notices submitted in any other way, including email, are considered ineffective. When you hear Miss Grace's experience where they're trying to impute or infer that she signed up for arbitration and you see the rigmarole you have to go through at Roku to get out of it, Mr. Schwartz, do you think that this is a, a contract that should be honored? I'm sorry, sir. Uh, you're, could you repeat the question, please? It's a long question. Right. I'm asking about the Roku company that has a forced arbitration agreement. And to opt out of it, you need to send an elaborate uh, number of communications specified in a manner that they accept. And you've heard Ms. Grace sitting next to you talk about what she went through, where it was inferred that she had signed this agreement. Can you comment on that aspect of forced arbitration? I think that um, forced arbitration, some people call it forced, but... <clears throat> in that situation with age, there, it's, there should be an opt-out. Uh, age situations are different than your regular purchase of a product. Um, and um, I think that it's an area where uh, carefully drawn rules should regulate such contracts. And in fact, in general, I would say to you, Senator, that this is an area where it's hard to find rules in the abstract. Having federal regulation of these arbitration agreements, I think is a sound step to do, rather than live it 
to the whim of state courts because some of the agreements may be unfair. They may be unfair with uh, Ms. Grace, um, but it's very hard to do that in the abstract without uh, specific knowledge of the specific contract. So I'm suggesting a consideration of having regulation at the federal level of these agreements, especially in areas of controversy like age, military, children, nursing homes. Thank you. Senator Graham. 